All right, so right now is the story after the cliffhanger in chapter six. And last last part, um, Apostius was at the point of his death because the enemy militia was about to lunge at him. And perhaps get, get his sword right through his neck or something like that. So suddenly he heard a plucking sound and everything seemed to get very quiet around him. What are you doing? Get up and pick up any weapon to fight. Thankfully, Thomas Fish of the man who was about to go around Apasius' shield and strike him. Apasius couldn't see his face due to his visor covering the face, but he recognized that it was Thomas because he remembered what his armor looked like. Then, Thomas turned around and appro approached Apasius. You never give up, do you hear me? Thomas literally shouted at Apasius and was breathing heavily as he helped Apasius get up. Y yes, sir. Apostius was totally shocked. Therefore, Apostius tried pulling out his sword again, but he failed miserably. Therefore, he looked around his surroundings and picked up a Turkish spear. He couldn't wield it well with one arm, so he had to let go of his shield. After that, he returned to the fight and began thrusting the spear to any available openings. Soon, he delivered some damage to the enemy militias. He had pierced the ribcage to which the enemy coughed out blood and tried to fight back while his mouth was oozing out red foam. Therefore, Apasius blocked away and pulled out the spear, from which blood squirted out from the hole that was made. He moved over to another area and pierced another enemy's face. And one time he gathered some spears and struggled while going up an abandoned car to throw them at the enemies. Furthermore, his throwing skills were horrible and he couldn't kill anyone, so he stopped after throwing three of them. He didn't know what to do, so he came back down to retrieve his shield and see if he could join the fight again. However, he couldn't get past his fellow soldiers, who had already moved to take up all the empty front lines fighting the militias. After waiting for a while, he grabbed a smaller spear, which he could wield, and he pushed the cart closer to the soldiers fighting in front and got upon it to see what was going on further down. There were malicious archers as well, not just malicious spearmen. The archers were far away, right in front of the town line, defended by the barricade of carts that were in front of them. They were shooting their arrows really fast, even faster than how the soldier archers used to fight. He soon noticed it that those militia archers weren't firing at them, but were firing at something else, which was Lord Pericles and his massive band of armored infantry. Suddenly, two crossbowmen looked back at him. Hey, can we use the cart for a while? One of them pointed at the cart. Pasius nodded and went down from the cart, so the crossbowmen went above it to see what was going on. It turned out that they weren't only looking, but also, they were shooting their bolts at the enemy militias in the back rows of the defense. Therefore, Apostles looked around to see if there was anything else to give more crossbowmen and higher ground to give them something to do if they're not fighting. Soon, he found some large crates and barrels, so he spoke to cr crossbowmen in the back lines to come over, and they understood right away what to do with those things. Some time later, there were six crossbowmen shooting bolts above their comrades' heads, and to the enemy militias. They killed some, but this wasn't quite enough since the enemy militias easily blocked off the bolts with their shields and started throwing the spears to counter the crossbowmen's shots. Some of the crossbowmen got hit and fell off from wherever they were shooting from, so Apasius felt very bad as he was looking at them getting hurt. Therefore, he approached one of them and held out his hand to help the crossbowmen. The crossbowmen shook his head took his hand and grunted as he got up. Are you alright? Pasio said. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. But gosh, they threw really hard. If it wasn't for my armor, I would have been dead meat. The crossbowman patted his left chest, the place where he got hit. How many bolts do you have left? Pasio look, looked for his quiver. Just six, so I would have to save them up for the future. Crossbowman pointed at his quiver. What's going on over there? It seems we are struggling a lot. To Apasius questioned the crossbowman sighed. 
It's actually harder to kill them than I thought. The militias are really good at stalling their deaths. Their defense is outstanding. I mean, they couldn't kill any of us, but they are dying very slowly in return. Get up there to see. I would like to go into melee now. Pasios looked around again and noticed that some other crossbowmen fell down, but no one was severely injured since they all had decent armor. Therefore, they came back up to shoot, and, and with them, Apostius got up to the cart to see. A while later, the enemy militias in the back ran out of spears to throw, or were saving them up for future use. So they made some kind of a test duty formation to maximize their defense against the bolts. Still, the crossbowmen continued firing, hoping to get through the gaps in the test duty defense and hit the militias. Suddenly, he noticed someone coming in this direction. Hey kid, scoot over, let me see what's going on. Thomas approached Apasios and his frustration was apparent. He was breathing heavily, and it seemed as if he had, he had fought very much, but all with fruitless results. So Apasios moved over and made room for Thomas to get up on the cart. By now, the, the militia archers in the town square were getting attacked by Lord Pericles' melee infantry and were shouting for help at the militia spearmen, who were busy fighting with a thin line of crossbowmen and gunners. Sometime later, most of the militias in the back suddenly turned around and charged towards melee infantry with spears raised, ready to throw one in range. What are you doing? Shoot at them! Furious Thomas pointed at the retreating spearmen. The crossbowmen immediately shot their bolts and, and successfully struck some of the spearmen to on their backs. But sadly, that still was not enough, and the rest of the militias were able to take a good charge against the Lord Pericles' melee infantry. Swish, swish, swish. The spears were hurled by the militias, knocking down the lightest armored troops of Lord Pericles with bitter force. It was the first time that the enemy killed and injured many people, therefore their morale rose. Then they cheered with joy and clashed onto the heavy soldiers with their swords they had in their sheets. This militia had chainmail with them, which was the reason why many of them lasted so long during hand-to-hand -hand combat. Support! Help us out! Flank them! Lord Pericles shouted for help since he noticed that his men were busy fighting on two fronts at once. Thomas tapped on Apostle's shoulder. Hey kid, stay here and wait till I get all the gunners. Thomas rushed to the front line and brought over all the gunners. He then brought over some melee infantry and told crossbowmen with low munitions to hold the enemy for a while. Back to others, he ordered them to load up their crossbows and guns, then be ready to fire once he gave order. Everyone move away! Gunners, fire! Thomas said. The crossbowmen in the front line immediately moved away, and as soon as that was done, the gunners fired their shots. Crossbowmen, fire! Thomas said. The crossbowmen fired their bolts, and luckily, many militias collapsed down to their deaths. Melee infantry, charge! Thomas led the valiant charge, and he struck the first militia on his head. It was a nice downward halberd strike, and the confused militia had no time to block it nor could he resist such power even if he had raised his shield. Therefore, he collapsed to his side and died immediately afterwards. You kill them like this, like that. You kill them because you and your friends' lives depend on it. Surely, it became much easier for Thomas to handle his halberd and kill the enemies since there weren't any crossbowmen or gunners around him to get in his way. Therefore, he was killing militias left and right, shouting along the kills and hoping to deliver some lessons to his incompetent and coward comrades. Soon, he stepped into the midst of the enemy militias and swung his halberd in a full circle, injuring some militias and striking other shields all at once. He did that numerous times, and the melee infantry hastily killed other militias who were trying to kill Thomas. Pasius decided that it was time for him to join, because he had rested way too much before. Thus, he picked up a spear, which was plentiful on that street, and charged onto the militias. One by one, the crossbowmen and gunners charged them, and by then, the militias had totally lost their testuda formation, and were retreating to the town square in small groups. After more swings by Thomas and infantry pushed by melee soldiers, 
crossbowmen and gunners, the remaining militias gave up their ground and ran towards the town square. The support soldiers pursued hard upon the enemy militias and reached the town square. That place had some merchant carts that weren't pushed away due to how fast Lord Pericles' army pushed through the town, and the militias tried to regroup in the middle of the town square to fight till death. Soon, there were fruits and vegetables flying in the air along with other merchandise getting crushed and destroyed by the fighting men. This battle started to get fun for Apostius. He was smiling while watching the enemy's town square getting wrecked. In fact, he always wanted to do something like that ever since he was young, hanging out with his friends at the town squares. Now he was finally satisfied that grown men are easily doing this. Lord Pericles was happy too, so he was about to confirm the victory and start conversing with his assistants about what they will do after the enemy surrender. Just then, there came a shout from inside the town hall, and a large group of armored militias came out to protect the, the town square. This militia had the best armor and weapons that the town could provide for them, so their chances of victory rose while that of Lord Pericles' army fell drastically. The militias who were around them regained their morale and helped push back Lord Pericles' soldiers. Lord Pericles was a wise leader who could also think on his feet. So upon seeing the new militias, he immediately started looking around at his surroundings to come up with this plan and coming out victorious. His soldiers were getting tired and a sense of sluggishness in fighting was very apparent. The lower ranking troops were frequently taking breaks from the front lines, while the veterans were starting to take on serious injuries and hits, as the enemies found areas that they could inflict injury on Lord Pericles' troops. Some of them were getting bodied just so much that he wondered how they were even standing. He also knew that taking frequent breaks was a shameful thing, but that's how much harder it is to fight on the front lines. It was because the stamina depletion during the battle is faster than during practice. Lastly, the support soldiers had barely defeated the last group, so he assumed that they were too shaken to fight much longer. Thus, he understood his troops' plight, but also realized that they weren't fighting in an orderly fashion. He then looked around again and saw that all the heavy troops were dispersed across the town square. If he could only lure the enemies into one narrow street, and then have his heavy troops do the shield wall formation, and then push the enemy with pure muscle force, with men behind pushing the men in front, then they could somehow turn the tide of this battle. He knew that his men had stronger force, it's just that they were quite winded and confused at the moment. It, all, it also has been such a long time since they last went on the raid, so his troops' capabilities in fighting during stressful conditions must have fallen much. Later, he got this Eureka moment, and a big smile formed on his face. <clears throat> Soldiers, regroup! Lord Pericles shouted and blew the commanding horn. This horn had a nice effect on soldiers, because if Lord Pericles blows him, then everyone stops what they were doing and immediately runs for where that sound came from. When some people regrouped around Lord Pericles, he called for a tactical retreat. Why? We have a chance! One of the captains shouted, but he was immediately silenced by Lord Pericles' glare, which explained to him that there was a plan to this. When you blew the horn for the second time, the remaining troops stopped whatever they were doing and started following others who were retreating to a narrow street that Lord Pericles was leading. Those who, were who, those who were behind followed them with all their might, so this emboldened the militia's resolve to fight. But they hesitated for a while before following the supposedly routing raiders. Perhaps they were calculating whether this was an all-out route or not. On the other hand, Lord Pericles and his soldiers ran as fast as they could. When that was going on, Lord Pericles never stopped glancing back at the enemies because they were, they were faster, so eventually they would catch up to them. Therefore, he slowed down and later stopped at a favorable place when the enemies almost caught up and shouted to put his plan into effect. Heavy melee troops, shield wall formation here! Soon, the heavy melee troops stood in, in front in tight formation. Shields up! Weapons ready? Hold! Immediately after, afterwards, the militias took a nice charge strike on the heavy troops. Now, light troops, push the heavy troops! 
Then the light troops focused all their attention on supporting heavy troops, where Lord per Pericles was in the midst. When he told the light troops to push the heavy troops, he didn't literally mean to push them, but to stand right behind them so that no one will fall back and break the almost perfect defense line. However, due to the sheer confusion of the battle, Lord Pericles gave no orders to miscellaneous troops such as Thomas' group. They were called miscellaneous because they were considered heavy troops but weren't excellent enough in melee to be called in for tasks like this, and everyone knew about this fact. Thus, they were st they were standing awkwardly behind, while their comrades fought for their lives in the front. Yet still, the crossbowmen and gunners were discussing amongst themselves whether to join the group or not. But sadly, nobody wanted to j join in because they were very tired and wanted to rest up a bit more before Lord Pericles gives another order. On the other hand, Thomas, the only one out of them who was excellent in melee, was always itching to fight and would have decided to go to the front lines in any other time. Also, nobody would have stopped him if he went to the front line. But, whether by chance or by his animal-like instincts, he decided not to go and searched for other militias or perhaps enemy civilians to vent out his rage. He eventually turned back to look. Look! The enemies have snuck up upon us! Fire! Lord Pericles have always encouraged his soldiers to take upon leadership positions during the times when he couldn't be present everywhere at every time to give them orders. So he gave the captains these privileges to take charge whenever he and platoon leaders weren't around. Currently, all the platoon leaders were fighting with Lord Pericles. So Thomas, being the higher ranking of the two captains who were present at the moment, decided to step in to fill in the role. Hey, close! Regroup over there! Thomas shouted at another captain, who seemed to be very confused. Just when Thomas finished his words, everyone in the back aimed and shot, while the enemy militias started charging. They started charging because they've just been found out and didn't want to lose the advantage of surprise attack. To counter that, Thomas hastily grouped out the remaining groups, the remaining troops and countercharged them. Luckily, most of the enemies were focused at the front, so there weren't much for them to fight. This group possibly could have been sent to outrun the raiders and stall them by cutting in front, so that elite militias in the back could catch up and strike. That's why the force was quite small, and the enemy hardly thought about the circumstances if the raiders stopped to fight again in formation. Phew! We had them taken care of! Thomas sighed at the end when the small fight was over and remaining militias were fleeing from them. Can we let them go? Apostius pointed, fleeing militias. Yeah, they're just a small group, so wouldn't do anything much. Thomas shrugged his shoulders. But what do we do about our guys? The enemies took out like half, so only eight of us are left. Jeez, even Captain Claus is down, Seth said. Yeah, they're out cold, but what do we do now? Ephraim said. They were referring to their fellow troops who got knocked out by the blows. It's near impossible to kill a person with strong armor and helmet, but it's possible for them to be knocked out by the blows on the head or back. Some people may be hit on such vulnerable areas, and there have been many of Lord Pericles' soldiers who are still knocked out somewhere in the streets near the town square. Thomas carefully looked at their fallen comrades. Oh, then, it's fine, let them rest, they'll get it back together soon. And it's our duty to go back to the front, though. Come on, we're winning, let's rest later. Had the armored enemy militias never hesitated during the chase, they would have had chased up to their foes in time to have the advantage of chaos, the type of battlefield that they were proven to be better in this case. In reality, that wasn't the case, and they received something far worse. The shield wall formation that Lord Pericles' soldiers made in the nick of time to counter the charging enemies had put an end to their morale. Apparently, Lord Pericles led his soldiers on chase for the militias without even thinking about his leftover soldiers in the back. Confusion during the battle was quite real, and Thomas knew right away that it was his duty to keep his men together, and with that thought in mind, he led his few remaining soldiers on the march and swiftly got to where Lord Pericles' soldiers were pursuing the fleeing militias. When they arrived, the militias had garrisoned themselves inside the town hall, 
and place even more barricades at the entrance. Hey, is our pitchman here? Pasius heard Lord Pericles speaking to an assistant. Yes, Lord, just as you've requested, the assistant said. Archers, you with arrows, come to me. Lord Pericles shouted to tired soldiers. Lord Pericles knew that charging into a well-defended location was a suicidal idea, so he devised another plan to subjugate his enemies. His soldiers were now either too injured or too tired to be of an effective force. That shield wall tactic and chasing at the end had exhausted any leftover stamina that they had left. And then there were those who got knocked out during fights. Therefore, he sighed and thought, Gosh, is this what I have? Even my platoon leaders aren't doing so well. All of them looked quite tired after that last shield wall push. There were too many enemies for the size of this town. What's up with them? He then looked as archers were lining up in front of the town hall facing the enemies who were hiding behind the barricades. When this messenger brought the pitch bucket, he proceeded to have a word with it with the enemies. Hey you! You in there who leads this small force, it's either you all surrender and accept my terms, or someone's going to burn soon. Of course, Lord Pericles spoke in Turkish for the enemies to understand. Immediately afterwards, another man approached behind the barricades and looked at what Lord Pericles' soldiers had in sight. There were archers getting ready to set the town hall on fire, so he flinched back and began discussing amongst his soldiers. I don't have much time. I will count to five, Lord Pericles said. Have mercy, sir. We surrender. The enemy's leader came out with arms raised. Okay, then. In small groups, you all must come out and put the weapons down here. Then, you must fill my carts with rain. Fill them with bushels until I say stop, and I will allow my soldiers to loop here and take as many cattle as possible. But humanely, and you will have to let us do that or else we will seriously sack this place. And then we will take many boys and girls as payment for my dead and wounded soldiers. We have wagons already, so you not having them wouldn't matter. If any of you try to resist, then my heavy troops will take all your lives under our hands. Okay, we accept those terms. The leader consented in a grim face. Then Lord Pericles brought up brought up his sword tip to the leader's neck. Now, tell me, do you guys have more soldiers hiding here somewhere? Or reinforcements coming from somewhere? Tell me the truth. I pretty much know that all these soldiers aren't yours. Lord Pericles glanced at the town hall to see if the Turks were staying inside. You waited until the last moment to save these other militias. So, you're either a horrible leader, or you didn't care much about those poor souls, since they weren't your troops. The Turkish leader began trembling and gulped a few times. There are no more soldiers here who will harm you, other than the ones in the town hall. However, reinforcement is coming. They'll be here in a while. Just, just let us go. We were just the vanguard force who were stationed here with the militias. The Turkish leader sighed heavily after letting out such classified information. That's what I suspected. I'll keep my word and I'll let you go. But after taking all your weapons. Lord Pericles said with a grim look. Lord Pericles then hastily ordered his soldiers to disperse and do their task, including waking up their comrades who were knocked out or picking up any weapons and supplies that were left in the battle rounds. Hurry up! We don't have much time left! We need to get out of here! A reinforcement army is coming! Lord Pericles shouted as his soldiers were running around doing various tasks. Some time passed before Apasius found Thomas rummaging through piles of goods. Thomas, can we load up this cart with whatever we find necessary? Apasius pointed to the cart which he was pushing around. Thomas glanced at Apasius. Yeah, you can do anything you want. Apasius looked around. Oh, okay, but where's Seth? Thomas continued rummaging through the piles. I don't know, but your friend's over there. He pointed at a friend who was also rummaging through another pile. Soon, I need to help out my other group. Thomas then pulled out something and lifted it up to see, then made a fist with his left hand in triumph. Pasius looked at what Thomas pulled out and was back full of coins. 
perhaps from a merchant guard. Your other group? Hasius had a blank face. Thomas turned around to look at him. You don't get it, huh? When Apasius shook his head, Thomas sighed. Wait, I have to help those guys out now. They are my men. Thomas pointed at another group of soldiers who were struggling with an armored cart. After that, Thomas looked at Ephraim, who was just about to get busy at throwing around the jumps, looking for something. Hey, Ephraim, come over here. Thomas stood up and waited as Ephraim hastily came over. Can you teach Apasius about our system here, regarding platoon leaders, captains, and officers, and how they all work? He never got the chance to learn them when we came. Okay, see ya. He then rushed away to see to help another group. Therefore, Ephraim came to Apostius. I will tell you from the lowest rank to the highest. The lowest is people like you and Seth, those without any titles. But being a soldier, we would call you guys anything. Soldier, platoon member, guy, whatever. Then there are officers like me. We're more like captain's assistants. I rank above you and Seth, and I'm in charge of you, of you guys when Thomas isn't around. Then, there are captains like Thomas, who rank above officers. They oversee two groups. So, total of eight people, including themselves. Thomas got his promotion two years ago, and due to his skills, he was placed in charge of three groups. Well, hmm. Total of... 12 including himself, and there are platoon leaders who rank above captains like Thomas. Currently we have four platoon leaders, and one of them is the leader of heaviest armored infantry leader. He oversees 21 people. Well, he's actually Lord Pericles. Then the next two leaders oversee 29 people each. They're the medium infantry leaders. Lastly, our platoon leader, the support infantry leader, oversees 41 people. Alright, I feel like it's time to stop here. <coughs> I was running out of breath at the last moment. <sighs> so, I'm going to continue uh, for the next round, and I'm going to continue until I finish the chapter 6. It's a pretty long one, so I will end up uh, uploading numerous videos on chapter 6 alone. So thank you for listening.